What is up everyone? Hey B Phoenix, how are you getting on? Welcome back to the test. This is the final revelation or the third test in the test series. If you didn't see the first two, I recommend you check them out. They're available on the channel. And yes, let's get straight into this. If you're wondering why I still didn't stream Elden Ring, by the way, I'm still a little sick, so keep that in mind. Let's see what this final one is. Let's see what is going to be different about this one. Before experiencing the test, it's highly recommended that you play the prequels. I have, I have, I have. Would you like to close this game now? No. I've already played the test in the test too. Well then, let us continue. Yes. Please make sure that you answer each question with the utmost honesty, as always. Take your time. Uh, even answering one question improperly may drastically change your outcome. Okay. I'll be more careful compared to last time. When the sun comes crashing down and the heroes fade away. When darkness is all around and there's no light of day. I will come back for you so that you never feel alone. My spirit will push through. Your heart will forever be my home. And when the world spirals into abyss, I will be standing there, your embrace. So long I've missed my soul, my love, I bear. Even when every nerve has been left deadened, and every ghost has left its shell, I will bring you back to your heaven, as you've rescued me from hell. From my hell. Okay. Nice poetic start. Oh. Fate, you're back. No matter what happens, I will always love you. Okay. Why are you saying it like that? Choice. <laughs> Do you promise? With every ounce of my heart and each droplet of my soul, I swear to you. We're going to find a way out of here. Man, this looks a lot more like a game <laughs> compared to the others. And don't forget, all these quizzes are leading up to what I've heard. It's going to be a special game that hasn't been released yet. Destiny. Hmm, I wasn't expecting you so soon. It's Destiny, <laughs> who also kind of looks like the Death. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. You know, the guy. Though I knew that one day we would meet in this room. You see, closely, I've been watching you. Me? How? Studying every breath and every move. A few of my former colleagues you may have met. And a slew of questions you've answered without regret. Okay, why does everything have to rhyme in this one? <laughs> I may be similar, but unlike them still. I'll make you swallow the truth like a bitter pill. That doesn't sound nice. I will peel the emotion from your soul. And make you eat your feelings whole. The questions I ask may be hard to answer. But I will cut the truth from you like a cancer. Both of us know why you're here. To open up and cast out fear. To be as honest as you can. To take angels' wings or devil's hand. And in the end we will both know how to escape your undertow. Time is on your side, but mistakes are not. Misanswered questions lead to misery rot. Okay. Take time to think before you decide. Dig deep for the answers that live inside. You may not go back, you may not return. Once the decision is made, into your soul, tis burned. But before we continue, just know this. Your dishonesty would be very remiss. If your answers lack the guidance of truth, then your final destination will be rather uncouth. With that being said, I need your heart's honesty. You can run from yourself, but you can't. Run from me. 
Oh, that's different. Last time it was you can run from me, but not from yourself, basically. Okay. Now let the examination begin. Do you ever feel like you just aren't good enough? Yes, I think everyone does. Quite often too, actually. More than I would like. Do you ever feel like you put more effort into friends or relationship than others put back into you? Do you ever feel like you put more effort into friends? Uh... I felt like that with some people, yes. Do you ever feel like your life is going nowhere? Yeah, yes. Do you ever feel like you're trapped in limbo? <sighs> in a way. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by seemingly trivial tasks? Yes. That's the thing about me. Sometimes it just gets too much, you know? Are you sometimes afraid of what your future may hold? Afraid? No. Worried, yes. Do you believe that your friends always treat you the way you deserve to be treated? Not, not maybe not always. Are you afraid of being the last person alive in your social circle? Not really. Are you afraid of the existence of an afterlife and what that might mean for you? No. Do you feel as though you're wanted in life? Oh, well, wanted as in, <laughs> like, criminally wanted? <laughs> or as in wanted, like, people want me in their life? I think if that's the case and I'm going to assume that that is, then yes. You ever feel like you just don't belong? Yes. You ever feel like a burden? Uh, I have felt that, yes, at some points. Have you ever felt left out? Yes. Have you ever felt like a failure? Yes. Come on. Have you ever felt like you just weren't attractive enough? Uh, <laughs> sure. Have you ever worked yourself sick? I think so. You ever, you ever have racing thoughts at night that make it difficult for you to get sleep? All the bloody time. All the time. <laughs> Are you afraid to ask for help? Yes, sometimes. Do you feel like people often criticize you? Yes. You ever feel judged by your friends or family? Sometimes? My god, this doesn't look good. What are these questions? You ever wonder what your purpose is in life? I guess so. If you could turn back time for any reason, would you? For any reason? Yeah. I would love to turn back time in some cases, in some decisions I made. Would you say that you have many regrets? Many regrets. Some, not many. Does meeting new people for the first time make you uncomfortable? Yes. Does looking out your window at night make you feel uneasy? Uh, out my window, no. Just being awake, though, yes. You sometimes double check that your door's unlocked, even though you're certain that you've locked them. Uh, no. I do check if I close doors, but not lock, technically. <laughs> you ever feel like life is moving too slow? No. Too fast, more like. You ever feel like life is moving? Yes. <laughs> do you feel uncomfortable when you're home alone? Well, I'm often home alone because I, I live on my own, but... Uh, sometimes I do. Would you consider yourself to be a thoughtful person? Yes, I think about stuff way too much. Would you consider yourself to be superficial? Superficial? I don't... Let me look that up what that means. Appearing to be true or real only until examined more closely. Uh, what? <laughs> so basically, am I fake? Uh, no. <laughs> you ever judge others by the way they look or dress? I mean, a little bit, yeah, I guess. Everyone does. I try not to do it too much, but it happens. Would you consider yourself to be high maintenance? Uh, did we have this question before? High maintenance. I'm not a robot, though. <laughs> Like, literal sense. Have you ever been bullied by someone you cared about? Bullied. 
by someone I cared about. No, I don't think someone I cared about. Have you ever been a bully to someone you care about? No. I don't think so. You try to keep a low profile to avoid attention from others while in a crowded area. Yes. You actively try to avoid busy places. Not necessarily. Would you sometimes rather be alone than surrounded by people you care about? Yeah, sometimes. Does so making phone calls make you feel uncomfortable? Yes, very much so. I hate phone calls. Are you sometimes afraid to confront people even when they do something that bothers you? Yes. Do you feel uncomfortable when committing to definitive plans for the future? Yes. I don't want to set things in stone, you know? Do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, you just can't seem to stay motivated? Yes. Do you ever feel that you're failing those who care about you most? Sometimes. My god, why is every answer yes for me? Does driving a vehicle give you anxiety? Not anymore. It used to. But I like driving too. Are you afraid of exploring new places by yourself? Yes. Have you ever carried an object around with you that made you feel more comfortable? Uh, yeah, I've tried that in the past, but it didn't really work. If I told you that I could guess your name correctly right now, would you believe me? No. Huh. Well, based on the answers you've provided for me so far, if I were to take a guess, don't do this. I say your name starts with the letter M, doesn't it? Uh, no. No. Both my real and YouTube name do not start with the letter M. Uh, and I don't even think the name of my PC starts with that. Unless it's like my PC and then my name. Could be that. But no. You're wrong. That makes sense. Okay, let's be real here. There's literally no way I'd be able to guess your name just by your answers. That would be ridiculous. Yes, you're right. But I've known games that rep my computer's information before. Besides, all of you humans look alike to me anyhow. Okay. Does being around animals bring you a sense of peace? Some animals. In some cases, yes. Do you sometimes believe your loved ones are lying to you when they say that they care? No, I, I think they do care. Do you ever feel like you push your loved ones away? I try not to. Hmm. I'm going to have to stop you here. Okay. The truth that pours forth is incredibly clear. I hope that you're being honest for your own health. I am. I'm trying to be. You can try to lie, but you'll be cheating yourself. I'd like to move on to the next phase of the test. A series of pictures to give your brain a rest. You're going to tell me what emotional response they bring out, okay. Which will show me what your mind is pondering about. So feast your eyes upon the art and let me into that precious heart. For starters, what emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Ooh. Anger, depression, joy, chaos, relaxation, numbness. Ooh. It feels kind of... Dark. I, I guess depression. I don't know why. It's just a feeling I'm getting. What word do you feel describes this picture the best? Trapped, manic, broken, soulful, chaotic, beautiful. Manic, broken... Trapped, manic, or broken? I think manic, in a way. What do you think this picture is called? Chaotic crystals, the portal, soul abduction, Jesus, a mind of misery, celestial stare. A mind of misery, maybe? Most fitting. Very interesting. Moving on. What am I you feel most present in this picture? Jesus. Anger, depression, joy, chaos, numbness. I, I, I'm gonna have to go with depression again. 
Stuck, Abyss, Toxic, Demented, Life, Exotic. I guess Demented? What do you think this picture is called? Corruption Wave, The Birthing, Blazing Soul, Destroyer of Sense, Darkness Within. Interesting. It's an interesting part. Corruption Wave, The Birthing, Darkness Within. I see. Next we have this one. Ooh. Uh, this one's different. I think this one's quite... Quite nice, actually. I'm gonna say relaxation. What word do you feel describes this picture? Glorious twin mirrored space... Planets galactic. Space. What do you think this picture is called? The Vault, Datacron, ICU. Clever. Reflection of the Universe, Shattered Worlds. Reflection of the Universe. Notice. Take a look at this one. Ooh, what emotion do you feel is most present in this one? Uh, chaos. What world do you describe space your gateway, staircase, heavenly, unknown, vast, open? Unknown, I guess? Uh, the name, light at the end of the tunnel, the porthole, dimension door, stairway to heaven, the rabbit hole. The porthole, the porthole. <laughs> dimension door kind of fits. Kind of seems like a door. That's peculiar. How about this one? Huh. I'm feeling depression again with this one. But maybe also some... It's also it's soothing in a way. That's weird. I'm gonna go for depression though. I ring abyssal darkness lightning blazing ring ring nets of darkness the abyssal gate shrouded misery energy crown darkness forming uh the abyssal gaze sounds cool and this here what emotion do you feel is present in this one? Ooh. That's relaxing again. Mask. Cyclops failed. Jungle. Prismatic. Shrouded. It does remind me of a jungle. Oh, whoops. I... Well, that was my mistake. I didn't even read it. I'm sure it doesn't matter that much. Ooh. Ooh, joy. Uh, planetary collide, bosoms, wings, feathers, heavenly. Planetary. Grow seeds, Mother Nature's gift, forming Earth, we meet again. Forming Earth. Hmm. How about this? How many are we gonna see? I would say anger. Fury, torment, volcano, brimstone, shattered, fault. Fury. Uh, arcing blaze, the world breaks, inferno gates, shattering, or rage incarnate. Uh, I'm curious, by the way, what you guys think of all these. Inferno gate, arcing blaze. Blaze. It's interesting that you say that. Is it? How about this one? Oh my god. That's an eye staring into my soul. <laughs> I don't want to go to depression again, but it, I can't. Cyborg field information analyzing. Analyzing. 
The Data Sphere, Thought Provoked, Incubation of Dreams, Matrix Watcher, Life Projector. Matrix Watcher. You will make note of that, huh? Uh, makes me feel, I don't know, warm? But also, I don't know. Let's go for joy. Ocean, sky, womb, destiny, warp, birth. Guess you could look at it like that. But warp is more with what I thought. Birthplace of Dreams, Monolith Heart, Endless Sea, Going Down, Ultraviolet. Birthplace of Dreams. Interesting. Take a look at this. How many are there? This is chaos. I don't like the square shapes. Broken. Disfigured. Anarchy. Broken. Deciphering I Broke You. <laughs> the Crystal Verse. Planner Zone, Picasso Face. Picasso Face. The Crystal Verse, that makes sense. We're almost done. What emotion feels present in this one? Relaxation. Arc, slime, vapor, melting, drool, fishes. Arc? Jewels of Death. Planet Cradle, Planet Forming, Dark Lights. Sludge. These aren't very positive. I don't even know what cradle means, so I'm gonna go with that. Interesting choice. Let's see here. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? I would say joy, but it's more of a comfort comforting feeling, I would say. Crown, sword, laser, sunlight, solstice, eclipse. Sonic Boom, Solar Blade, Broken Seal, Red Angel, Solar Bl Solar Blade? Yeah. Alright then. Just a few more. I don't know how this helps with anything. How do you know anything from this? And how many are we gonna do? Uh, this one's chaotic again. It's not flowing enough. Cosmic Sphere, Eye, Beauty, Pearl. Eye. Spiral world, marble of time, formless being, higher intelligence, planar core. Spiral world. That's surprising. Is it? Almost finished. Yeah, you said that before. What emotion do you feel is present in this one? Depression. Gaseous, chaos, warped wave, nebula, jungle. Chaos. Vaporous forms, light breaking, solar space, leaves up close, verdant path. Vaporous forms. Last one. Australia is just showing us the same ones again now. Ah, uh, same one again. Music, chore, voice, hollow. Void. Sound of silence, empty worlds, warp tunnel, notes of harmony, the static field. The static field sounds good. I think that about wraps it up. Finally, that was like 15 minutes of just pictures. Your answers have been documented well. Deep into your subconscious, they dwell. But I'm not finished with you just yet. There are still some truths that have yet to be met. As a matter of fact, this is only the start. We will have a great deal of fun before we part. Will we? So let me challenge you on another level still. I will pick your brain until I get my fill. This next set of questions will test your conscience more. And again, your honesty I do implore. Let us begin. One year, you're running a little low on funds to purchase presents around the holidays, so you decide to spend one dollar and get everyone in your family a lottery ticket. How? <laughs> you give each of them their own lottery ticket and wish them the best of luck. 
The drawing is held, and one of your family members hits the jackpot, but it's someone who you don't really get along with. I just bought a present for out of moral obligation. They plan to keep the money all for themselves, as they feel like it was their ticket. How does this make you feel? Angry, they should share the prize. Jealous, I regret buying them the ticket. Happy, good for them, I'm glad they won. Indifferent, that's the way life goes sometimes. Ooh, um, I would be a little jealous in a way. Uh, I would also be happy for them. I wouldn't really be angry, I don't think. I would also be indifferent to it, though. Like, it's... As it says, it's the way life goes. Like, I don't regret buying them a ticket. I don't think I can say that. I'm a little jealous, but... I think in the end I would be happy for them. Very well. What would you wish to do in this situation? Try to steal their tickets? Destroy their tickets? No. Get them killed, so I inherit the money. Let them be happy with their winnings. Yes. If the roles were reversed, you were given a winning lottery ticket. Will you share the money with your least favorite family member who bought you the ticket in the first place? Uh, I like sharing. I think I would. With family members, especially if they bought me the ticket, I think it's only fair. I see. Unless I really hate them. <laughs> now you're walking through a forest and you come across a black suitcase. Inside the case, there rests one million dollar. Along the money, there lies a bloodstained note with only one word. The note simply says, don't. How does this make you feel? Scared, there's blood in there. Anxious, what if someone comes for the money? Excited, about to be rich, indifferent, none of my business. I guess... Anxious. What would you wish to do? Grab the suitcase and run back to my car. Take as much money as I could hold. Leave the rest. Call the police and let them know about the suitcase. Leave the suitcase and move along. Uh, well, this is just disturbing. I wouldn't take it. I feel like I would, I would just die. Call the police, probably. If the note wasn't covered in blood, would it change your decision at all? S hmm, if it was just a note saying don't. In a suitcase with a million dollars. Oh, that would be so weird. Oh, I don't know. I think it would change my decision. Interesting. Yeah, it is. The devil appears in your room at night while you're alone and just about to fall asleep. And tells you that he has a special one-time offer for you. In exchange for your soul and eternal damnation... He will let you choose from one of the three glorious bargains. He has not told you what those bargains are yet. How does this make you feel? I'm scared the devil is in my room. Suspicious. I don't think the devil truly exists. Intrigued. I wonder what he's willing to offer me. Angry. I want him out now. Um, I will be scared. Probably. The devil then goes on to assure you that you whether or not you believe him to truly be the devil, he surely is. To prove his point... He demonstrates magnificent magical prowess, <laughs> you mean powers, and drags you to hell for a split second before transporting you back to your room. In that second you could feel a lifetime of pain and suffering in the most unimaginable ways possible. He then goes on to tell you of his offers in exchange for your soul to see if you can strike a bargain. Which of these would you choose in exchange for your soul, if any? All the wealth and power in the world. You'll never age, but can still die from physical injury. You can bring one person back from the dead. I wouldn't sell my soul to the devil. Yeah. Eternal pain and suffering. No, thank you. I wouldn't sell my soul. If the devil offered you a deal of some kind, would you accept it in exchange for eternal damnation? Does that mean... Like, I think that means... Um, that I wouldn't go to hell, right? Or does it mean I would go to hell? I think it... Maybe it does. A deal of some other kind. We accept it in exchange for eternal death. No. I see. If I think it means what it means, then I wouldn't. So the is about to come to an end as a plague sweeps the globe, turning everyone who perishes into mindless zombies who hunger for living flesh. 
You watch as everyone you know becomes gravely ill at turns, except for five of your closest friends and family. How does this make you feel? Incredibly sad, I don't want the world to end. Excited, I've always fantasized about a zombie apocalypse. Scared, I don't know if I could survive for long. Indifferent that it, this is life now. My first reaction would be scared. And then also sad, but first scared, probably. If you knew a zombie apocalypse was coming in 10 years and you could prevent it from happening, would you? Yes. Interesting. Well, why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> Unless I would pick the exciting option. You've been working at a company for 10 years, promised a very important and incredible lucrative, lucrative promotion. However, someone hired only a number of weeks ago has just been promoted to the position that you were promised. I've had this happen to me, actually. Your boss essentially tells you tough luck and maybe one day you'll get the position and he had to promote the other employees a favor for a friend. How does this make you feel? Angry? Jealous? Betrayed? I can't trust my own employer? Indifferent? Not necessarily jealous. I think angry mostly, yeah. You've also learned a few secrets about the company that could be disastrous if they were to escape, just the fact that they haven't been properly reporting their income for the last decade. What would you wish to do? Threaten to report my boss for fraud, quit my job, look for new employment, sabotage, to get them fired, nothing, you win some, you lose some. I would probably quit my job, honestly. Uh, and I almost did in this situation. I wouldn't sabotage them, I wouldn't report them, like, I, I worked there, so I must be alright with it. If the roles were reversed and you were hired and promoted as a favor over someone more deserving, would you accept the position? If I knew that that was the case... No. I see. Very interesting. You're home alone at night, cooking food in your kitchen and turn around to realize that someone is watching you through your window in the darkness. Nice. They have their face and hands pressed up against the window and they make direct eye contact before turning and running out of sight around the other side of the house. How does this make you feel? Scared? Where did they go? Anxious? I don't know what's about to happen. Secure? I'm ready to handle whatever's coming. No. Protective? Anxious, probably. What do you think you do? You do? Lock the doors, call the police, grab the nearest weapon, check to see if everyone in the house was safe. I'm alone. Run out of the house and go to the neighbors. No, that's a bad idea. Uh... Probably wouldn't call the police straight away. I would try to protect myself, though. If the face you saw in the window was the face of a supernatural entity and not of a human being, would your answer change at all? Yes. I don't think I could fight it then. I'm going to present you with some more potential scenarios, but I'm going to ask for more simplistic answers as a result. Here we go. You're not feeling all too well, so you decide to go to the doctor. The doctor runs a series of tests and gets back to you shortly after to announce some grave news. Turns out that you've contracted an incredibly rare disease and there's currently no cure. This illness causes complete body paralysis within six months of contraction, meaning that in less than half a year you will be rendered, you will be rendered unable to move, blink, talk or any form of expression. You will need to be kept alive on a feeding tube and never be able to communicate with anyone else ever again. Just being kept alive on machines in a vegetative state. Would you want to be kept alive in that state or would you rather have the plug pulled if that happens? I would pull, want to pull the plug. I don't think it's a good life if you cannot communicate with anyone in any way. Now if I still had the option to communicate and I was just paralyzed from the waist down, for instance, I would still live. But living in a vegetative state? No. How would you like to spend the last six months of your life while still mobile? Why are these questions all so dark? Spending it with my friends and family, pursuing all the dreams I haven't yet accomplished, making the world a better place while I can. I'd wallow in self-pity probably want to die. Uh... Making the world a better place while I can sounds really nice. But I don't know what I could do in six months. And I think it goes with pursuing all of the dreams because that's one of my dreams. 
so I think I would do that. There are diseases out there that can put you in that sort of unfortunate situation. Does knowing this motivate you to do things you've never done before and pursue more from life? Or do you feel relatively unaffected by the knowledge that this could potentially happen at any point? Uh, it, it doesn't really change anything for me, I don't think. You have a pet dog who you raised since birth. Three years has passed and it's the best dog you've ever had. You love it like it's your own child and one day he runs away in the middle of the night, chasing after a wild animal. You search everywhere for your dog, but no matter what you do, you can't seem to make any progress. About a month passes and you still haven't seen any trace of your four-legged friend. Till one morning, you awaken to the sound of a familiar barking. You rush outside to find that your elderly neighbor in his late 80s is out on his front lawn, joyously playing with your dog. That would be weird. He is named the beast Johnny, and him and your dog seem to be having the time of their lives. You rush over there and hug your dog, and he excitedly licks your face. Your neighbor says, Johnny's a good boy, isn't he? I lost him when I was just a boy, about your age. But he's come back. Johnny has come back and we're together again. Oh. Oh, that's weird. Come to find out, your elderly neighbor is suffering from dementia. Oh, okay. Recently bought on by the stress and heartache of losing his wife just a couple of months prior to finding your dog. Oh, come on. This dementia has caused him to believe that your dog is his old dog from his childhood, coming back to make him happy and keep him company. Come on. Dog seems to be in great shape, very happy, well looked after. And you know that telling the old man isn't really his dog, and that it's your dog will break his heart and crush him. <laughs> will you break the news to him that it isn't his dog? And take Johnny home with you, or would you let him keep the dog and choose to visit him daily to play and go for walks? Oh, well, when you put it like that, when you put it like that, and I know it's gonna break his heart, I cannot take my dog bag back home with me. I couldn't do it. It will break my heart too, but. I think, yes, it's always good to be honest, never lie, tell the truth, but in this case, I can still visit him, I can still walk with him, and I would let the old man keep my dog. Does the story make you sad at all? Yes, a little bit. Can you imagine yourself in the old man's position, being so alone in life, finding things that make you feel less alone, potentially having to face it being ripped away? I can't imagine it, yeah. Okay, next question. Let's say that you were officially murdered by a serial killer and you fell for one of their traps as they lured you in and made you their latest victim. Now let's say that you are given a unique opportunity in the afterlife as you return as a spirit to roam the earth. However, you're bound to two potential options and only two. You can either choose to haunt your assailant and make his life miserable, hopefully foiling his plans to kill in the future and potentially save lives in the process. Or you can choose to spend your time as a spirit amongst your still living family and friends, guiding them in positive ways and making their lives better. Oh man, these are hard questions. You are bound to whichever options you choose until either your family and friends are no longer living or your killer is no longer living. You cannot choose both, which one would you choose? Well, the only thing that's making me question it is because I have the potential to save lives if I haunt my killer, it said that. But it did say it's also a potential, it's not a guarantee. And I think it's good to focus on the positive and help out my friends and family if I still could. So I'm gonna go with that. Do you think that they have what it takes inside to drive your killer insane and push him over the edge. Do you think I have what it takes? I think I have what it takes. If I needed to. Do you believe that this scenario is possible? Not really. Not in this way, at least. If the situation happened to a friend or family and they were viciously killed, which situation would you rather them choose? Um, the same one. I think. Next question. 
One night you go to sleep and get a good rest that feels like the best sleep you've ever had. You wake up in an unfamiliar room in an unfamiliar bed. You look in the mirror and you hardly recognize yourself. You look as though you've aged 20 years. There's a stinky note on the television that says press play so you oblige the note and hit the play button to reveal a message that has been left for you by all of your friends and family. They are still alive and well though they all seem to be 20 years older. They explain to you that every single day for the last 20 years you've repeated the same day over and over again. Due to a severe head injury, your memory doesn't last more than 24 hours, so each day when you sleep, all recollection of what took place 24 hours prior is wiped entirely. Your loved ones have made a video to let you have a say in your potential future. You have the option of either watching this video every single day so you know what's going on and continue to progress even though you won't have any recollection of it. Or you could choose to continue living as you have been, repeating the same day over and over and living in ignorant bliss. <laughs> Which would you choose to do? <sighs> I would rather watch the video every day, would rather live happily but unknowing. So is ignorance bliss, huh, in this case? If you didn't know, it wouldn't bother you, but it would bother the people around you. Uh, but I do think I would want to know and at least try to change it, try to make it better and try to get a little further every day, if you know what I mean. Convince myself a little better every day. So yes, I would think I would do that. Would you be upset if your family kept the truth from you for 20 years, even though they felt like it was for your own good? No. I understand why they would do it. If your best friend was in this situation, would you make a video telling them? Uh, I would make a video and at least give them the option. I will take note of your answer. I've come to find through frantic digging in the attic and the reading of old files that newspapers uh, that your parents are famed psychologists. You also come to find that they aren't really your parents. In fact, they're not even related to you at all. What you can gather through new discoveries, a story tells of a young child who developed psychotic tendencies and went into a trance before murdering their parents in a tragically brutal way. Jesus, however, a child suffered so, so much trauma from the loss of their parents once the trance had worn off that they repressed the memory, blocking it completely from their mind. Two psychologists took the child to treatment and performed studies against the child's knowledge, raising that child to be fully functional while playing the role of the child's real parents to further gather data and potentially help the child avoid a terrible life. You are that child, yeah. Would you resent your parents? Uh, would I blame my parents? My fake parents? No, they wanted what's best for me in the end, I think. So no. We can be grateful they give you a second chance. Yeah, I mean... If you're like psychotic, then you can't really help it, especially as a child, so... Yes. Would you feel betrayed by your parents? No. Would you confront your parents about the articles? Yes, I think I would do that though. If you were in your parents' position, would you do the same for a child in a similar situation? If I was in the exact same position and I think I could help them? I think so, but in my current position, of course not, because I wasn't I wouldn't be able to. I have one final scenario before we move on. The end of the world has come and gone, and all that's left are post-apocalyptic soldiers roaming the lands, combing through the towns, and laying waste to any survivors in their paths in hope of claiming their equipment for themselves in order to survive this harsh, barren wasteland known as planet Earth. You're getting good when a large colony of soldiers has spent about six months with them, before they decide that you're not pulling your weight and in order to save the very few food rations they have left, they exile you from the compound and send you out to fend for yourself. 
You decide to venture into a neighboring town in hopes of finding food that was left behind by raiders and it only takes you about a day and a half before you strike gold. A hidden underground bunker stockpiled to the brim with enough food. Now you have a few choices to make. Would you go back to the colony and tell them about the bunker? No. If they treated me like that... Well, I somewhat understand why they did it. They basically sent me to die. So I wouldn't go back. I don't think it would bring good things. If you could choose to only tell some of the soldiers and let them in, but exile the soldiers who exiled you, would you do it? If I can only choose, if I can choose certain ones, and if there are people left that were on my side, but didn't have a choice in the matter, then yes. I can imagine a scenario where that would work. If you were to lead a new colony, would you build it based on savagery and raiding? On sharing and compassion? Sharing and compassion, always, even if that means that you can't make it. If you're the leader that exiled you, uh, of the colony that exiled you, except it was you who exiled someone else who wasn't pulling their weight. And that person just so happened to find themselves in a similar situation where they found a jackpot, but they refused to share it with you in the colony. Would you raid them and steal it, or would you let them keep what they found? Uh, well, if I was in this situation, it means I'm evil, and I already exiled them, and I only care about myself. So I would, in that case, say their bunker now belongs to me. Very interesting. Well, that wraps up this portion, finally. My god, this one's so different. It's so dark and long and just not so nice scenarios. But I need more from you before I allow you to rest. Oh god. A choice here, a choice there. Which would you rather? More dilemmas abound for what I can gather. You will answer clearly, crisp and concise. Will you be selfish or is your conscience a vice? In just mere moments from now we both shall see the difference between who you are and who you wish to be. Let us begin. Would you rather abandon the person you love most or be abandoned by the person you love the most? It sucks to be abandoned, but I couldn't do it to someone else. I couldn't do it to someone else. Would you rather have friends in high places who could get you anything you wanted but didn't necessarily care about you? Or friends who couldn't give you anything but they feel a deep personal bond with you? No, I... Friends with a stronger bond, not in high places, who cares? Would you rather find 10,000 and keep it for yourself and find 20,000 but have to split it four ways with your closest friends and family? Oh, <laughs> I would split 20k, I would, it's nice, I still get 5k, and I'm sure they'll give something back to me, in some way. Would you rather cheat on your partner but never get caught to know that your partner cheated on you, but have no way of proving it? Get cheated on with no evidence to prove it, I can just leave though, right? I can still leave. Um... So it's basically what I want to get cheated on or cheat on. I couldn't do it. I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. Would you rather get rich through illegal means or be poor but live an honest life? Rich but live a dishonest, poor but honest and sincere. Honest and sincere. I love to be rich. I think that would be great, but... I can't live a dishonest life. Would you rather press a button that will kill your favorite pet or press a button that will kill your favorite family member? Well, pet. I'm sorry, as much as I like animals, I'm not gonna sacrifice a family member for them. And also, I don't have a favorite pet at the moment because I don't have a pet. So it's easier. Would you rather get fired from a high-paying job or have to fire your friends from a high-paying job? Ooh... Well, if there's a reason that I'm firing my friends... Th 
then I would do that, but if there's no reason, then I would rather get fired myself. I'm gonna assume in this case that there's no reason for me or them to get fired and then I would, yeah, rather get fired myself. Would you rather sleep with your step-sibling or sleep with your best friend's partner? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Um, no. <laughs> First of all, uh, my step-siblings are all guys, so no way. Second of all, even if that wasn't the case, I think it would be easier to, as bad as that would be, to sleep with my best friend's partner. I think that's less bad. Would you rather save your f best friend from certain death and let 1,000 strangers die or save 1,000 strangers and let your best friend die? My god, it's a thousand people though. As much as I like my friend and I would do nearly anything for them. For my best friend, even though I don't don't really know who that is, just in my head, a thousand people, I could I couldn't. I need to save the people. It's a thousand people. And yeah, the the earth is overcrowded. That's for sure a thing. But I couldn't do it like that. Would you rather get free food for the rest of your life or rescue a starving child from a third world country? Oh. No question. No, no question. Would you rather be rich without family or poor but with family? Family. Would you rather have to steal food for the rest of your life in order to eat or steal enormous amounts of money from the wealthy but have to destroy the money immediately after? What? Why would I steal money from the wealthy and then have to destroy it? Like, what's the point? Who benefits from that? No one. Steal food is bad, but if it's my only way to live... Of course. Would you rather serve four years in the military during wartime, or move to a third world country and never be allowed to return home? As much as I wouldn't want to be in the military, I think it's awful uh, that it has to be a thing, even. Well, the thing is, it depends on the conditions. A third, living in a third world country isn't necessarily bad if you have the right people around you and you know what to do. But I can't go home. I can't come back here. During wartime though. Now I think I can make do with living in a third world country. Under the right conditions. Would you rather always be traveling 10 miles above the speed limit or 10 miles below? Well... <laughs> I'm gonna assume that there are still consequences, so yeah, below. I do always drive a little above, though. <laughs> Would you rather never have sex for the remainder of your life, or have to have sex every day in order to stay alive? Jesus Christ. Everyday sex sounds great. <laughs> Would you rather be addicted to hardcore drugs for 10 years but make a full recovery, or addicted to alcohol for the rest of your life? Alcohol can be just as bad as drugs. And drugs is only 10 years, alcohol for the rest of my life, that will kill me. I think I can survive the drugs, depending on which drug. Would you rather live to be 200 years old in a perfectly preserved youthful body and have to watch your friends and family die, or live to be 70 but die before your friends and family? It's nice not to have to lose everyone around you. And living for 200 years, that's a long time. Although, 200 years, it does say perfectly preserved youthful body. And that changes it for me, actually. Because I, I can deal with losing loved ones. And living for 200 years is pretty cool. I get to see so many things and so many ways the world will evolve. Yeah, I think so. Would you rather sacrifice all of your friends in order to survive or sacrifice both of your parents? All of my friends... Because I don't have many friends, and my parents, well, I only have one parent, my mom, and a stepdad. Sacrifice, though, that sounds awful, but I think friends. Would you rather get acknowledged for work that you didn't do, or work hard, but not receive any praise for it? I hate it when you don't get praise for things you do, and 
I don't like to get acknowledged for work I didn't do, but it's not that bad. So yeah. Would you rather punch a nun or get punched by a nun? I would rather punch a nun. Would you rather lose all money you've earned this year? Or lose all of the memories you've gained this year? Lose all money or memories? Uh, I've had some great memories this year that I wouldn't want to lose. And money, I didn't earn that much, so... Yeah. Would you rather flip a coin for a chance to win 20? dollars or immediately win 10. Well, for this low amount, I would take the risk. For anything more than this, I would just take the guaranteed number. Would you rather know how you die or when? I think we had this question before. If you know how you'll die, you can try to avoid it, but I'm going to assume that it's not possible to avoid either how or when you're going to die. So let's say you die to, I don't know, a car accident. You would be so scared every time you go on the road. And if you knew when you would die, it would suck. I wouldn't want to know. But at least I can have peace with it. There's nothing I can do about it. And I know how long I have left. So I think in this case, when is better than how. Would you rather be blind but able to see crystal clear or be deaf always? Uh, be able to see crystal clear underwater, I meant. Blind except for underwater, permanently deaf. For un It's a weird one. See underwater, what? I think that's cooler then. If it's just blind or deaf, I would rather be deaf. But I think in this case, it sucks. But yeah, it's cool to see underwater. Would you rather give up all internet and social media, but be- And maybe you can do something like, have like, uh, uh, goggles on that are like, uh, filled with water and you can see through them. Would that be cheating? I think that would work. Would you rather give up all internet and social media, but be able to travel the world for free? Or have the best internet in the world for free, but never leave your house? As much as I like YouTube, I would I would rather be able to leave my home. I don't care about the free traveling, but the fact that I can travel at least, I couldn't always stay home. I couldn't. Would you rather walk barefoot across a bed of hot coals or walk barefoot through a pitch blake snake infested corridor? Well, I know you can walk on hot coals. If you focus and do it right, it won't even hurt you. So I picked that, please. Snakes could be poisonous. Would you rather be the judge who sentenced people to death or the executioner in charge to kill them? Ooh, I couldn't be an executioner, I don't think. And I couldn't really be a judge that sentences people to death, I don't think, but I think that would be slightly easier for me. Would you rather have a witch cast nasty hex on you so you always have bad luck or be haunted by a demon intent on possessing you always have bad luck or be haunted by a demon well this is both terrible but at least with bad luck I can still be happy if I'm haunted like oh my god that's awful <laughs> Would you rather be married to someone incredibly beautiful who doesn't find you attractive or be married to someone whom you're not even remotely attracted to but they find you incredibly attractive? Uh, I couldn't be married... Well, well, to be honest, that's their problem. That's not my problem. That's their problem. Would you rather work a high-paying job that you despise or a low-paying job that you love doing? <sighs> low-paying... It depends on how low and how high, but rather be low paying and I love it than I hate it. Would you rather walk one mile home wearing nothing but a pair of socks or be fully clothed but have to walk 100 miles to get home? Oh, one mile home naked. Bring on the naked. I don't care. <laughs> Would you rather fight $5 in your pocket or have to grab $100 out of a public toilet? Have to. Like it's a must. Um, 
I can wash my hands afterwards. I don't care that much. Would you rather have 100 of your favorite books but never watch a movie or 100 of your favorite movies but never read a book? I'm more of a movie than a book person. I like books, but I give up books. Would you rather always be 20 minutes late or two hours early? It sucks to be late, but my god, I couldn't be two hours early. I couldn't live with that. Better to have ask to, for, for, for forgiveness, right? Would you rather find a dead body or be witness to a deadly assault? Oh god. Both are terrible, but I would rather find someone who's already dead than someone who is about to die. Would you rather be able to change your past or see what the future holds for you? Nah, I would, I would want to see the future. Would you rather have one really great friend or 100 mediocre friends? One great friend is better than 100 mediocre friends, let's be honest. Would you rather lose all your teeth or lose one day of your life every time you kiss someone? <laughs> what? <laughs> I can get fake teeth, no problem. Would you rather win the lottery and lose the tickets before you can collect your money or see your worst enemy win the lottery? Ah, uh, my worst enemy? Ah, sure. At least someone gets the money that way. Would you rather find true love or have your dream job? Oh. If I could only have one. So it would be impossible to get the other. I think true love... Just about beats the dream job, but it's really close. Would you rather have a pause button for life or a rewind button? Uh... A, what, what would a pause button do? <laughs> like, how does that help me? I think rewind's better. Not that that would rewind much, but some things. Would you rather drown to death in gasoline or be boiled to death in water? Oh my god. This is awful. Drown to death in gasoline. Boiled in water. Boiling to death sounds awful. Drowning is awful too, though. I think it would hurt slightly less, maybe? To drown? Would you rather make a new friend every day or get 100 a day for doing nothing but never have friends again? Okay, $100 a day. That's 36000 a year. $36,000 a year. Or make a new friend every day. It's hard to make a new friend every day, man. But... Never having friends again? It's not enough money. A thousand dollar a day, maybe. But a hundred? No. And maybe those friends end up giving me money or <laughs> getting me money somehow. Would you rather die to save your family or sacrifice your family to save yourself? I would give up myself for family. Yeah. Would you rather always be hated by those closest to you for something you didn't do or have everyone you care about everyone have hurt everyone you care about but never find out it was you? I would hate to be hated, but I I don't want to hurt my family. Would you rather sleep with your worst enemy or sleep with someone who knows he has many incurable STDs? Uh well, I can get over sleeping with my worst enemy for a day. I think. And STDs are forever. So yeah. <laughs> Would you rather only eat food you don't like or give up all liquids except for water? I can't eat food I dislike. And I drank so much water already that... It wouldn't, I wouldn't like it, but f I think I would rather have the food with water than all drinks, but always hate the food. Yeah. Would you rather always listen to music at max volume? This is a long one, by the way. Or we'll always listen to music just above the lowest volume. Max volume or just lowest? Max volume. Let's go. <laughs> I don't like loud music, but still, it's better. Would you rather meet your hero and find out that they don't like you or never meet your hero at all? In that case, I'd rather never meet my hero. If they hate me, no. That would be awful. 
Would you rather never have a pet for the rest of your life or never have friends for the rest of your life? I want to have both, but pets I care slightly less about than friends. Would you rather live in excruciating pain or live pain free, but everyone you know and love will live in excruciating pain for the rest of their lives? I'll take on all the pain in the world if it saves others from it. Thank you for answering, but we're not done yet. Oh my god. Still? For we've made it through many categories except for one. These final questions will be from deep within. I want to see your soul. I want to see your heart beat quicken. I want to learn all that you know. I want to see what makes you think. I want to see what makes you tick. I want to know your darkest truths. I want to know what makes you sick. I want to expel the truth from yourself. I want you to feed on your precious fate. I'm not going to eat fate. They seem nice. <laughs> I want to learn of all all your love and bathe in all your hate okay so one last time we sit together as we await the final revelation these are the last questions i have the last examination take your time do think hard savor every moment dearly for when i am finally finished with you you will see it all ever so clearly and here we go Choose one of these words that you feel resonates with you the most in this very moment. Morbid, destructive, insane, unclean, volatile, impetulant. Okay, I have to look up these words. Okay, petulant means insolent or rude in speech or behavior. So, the opposite of that, I guess. Volatile is like, is like easily change your... your uh your your mood i guess unclean insane destructive none of these really but i guess volatile choose one of these words that you feel resonates with you most curious intrigued fascinated interested inquisitive uh inquisitive um curious intrigued I think interested. Do you ever lie to those who are closest to you? Well, yeah, sometimes, I, I'm sure. Sometimes it's for the best. Have you ever hurt someone whom you know didn't deserve it? These questions we've had before. Um, have you hurt someone who you know didn't deserve it? I think so, in the past. Have you ever lost your temper where you know you shouldn't have? No. Not when I know I shouldn't have. Have you ever intentionally hurt an animal? Ooh, when I was younger, yes. But I was really young, I was stupid. Have you ever blamed someone for something that you know they didn't do? Have I? I don't think I have. Have you ever abandoned a pet? No. Have you ever abandoned a loved one in their time of need? No. Have you ever stolen something for someone that you cared about? Have I ever stolen anything in general? I don't think so. Have you ever broken something that's to spite someone that you cared about? When I was really angry, I th yeah. I think so. Have you ever played the victim in a situation even though you hadn't been wronged? Maybe. 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 I think so maybe in the past. Have you ever had a romantic feelings for someone who wasn't your partner while you were in a relationship? No. Have you ever wished for the death of someone who had wronged you? No. Have you ever wished for the death of a loved one? No. If you knew that writing someone's name on a piece of paper could instantly cause their death, would you write down anyone's name? Yes. Maybe. There are some people in the world. Not some people I know personally, but... Uh, maybe. You feel like you could spend more time with your loved ones than you currently do? Maybe. <laughs> if you ever owed someone an apology but refused to apologize to them. 
No. If I feel like I need to apologize, I always do. You ever regret worrying too much about things you can't control? Yes. Often. Do you ever feel like your negativity brings other people down? Yes. You ever regret not standing up for yourself when you feel like you've been wronged? Yes. You ever feel like you let others influence your decision making too much? Yes. <laughs> you ever wish that you lived a more honest life? No. Has your dishonesty ever caused someone else to suffer? Oh my god. I'm sure it has in some form at some point. Have you ever had someone leave your life before you had the chance to tell them something important? Yes, when I was much younger as well. I, I wanted to ask a girl out and I didn't and I regretted it afterwards. So, yeah. Do you ever feel like you prioritize people in your life that are unworthy of your time? No. Do you ever feel like you prioritize your own ones before those who need you most? No. Do you ever feel like you spend too much time working towards something that you're not truly passionate about? Yes. Do you feel like you're living up to your full potential? No. Do you ever like your fears stop you from pursuing things that you truly want? Yes. Too often. Do you ever refuse to try something because you were afraid that you would fail? Yep. Yeah. Have you ever been attracted to someone who refused to let them know because you were afraid of being rejected? Exactly what happened with the story I just told. Do you ever feel as though you're chasing the wrong things in life? Got that feeling. Do you ever feel like you spent so much time planning for the future that you ignore the present? Sometimes. Do you feel like your friends or family like you more than you like them? No. Have you ever loved a pet more than your family? No. Do you ever make up excuses to get out of going to an event instead of just telling the person that you don't want to go? Yep. Yeah, guilty. Do you ever feel like you spent more time with technology than you do building stronger bonds? Yep. Yeah. Have you ever defended someone that you shouldn't have? No. Do you sometimes have a hard time admitting when you're wrong? Sometimes. Maybe. Do you ever place the blame for your personal failures on someone or something else? Yeah, sometimes, I guess. Have you ever accused someone of something with no real evidence to back it up? No, I don't think I have. Have you ever had sex with someone who you know you shouldn't have? Uh... <laughs> uh... No. <laughs> have you ever had any kind of relationship with someone who you know you shouldn't have? No. Have you ever let a relationship degrade you because you were afraid of being the one to break up? Yes, in a way. Do you ever feel like you could take better care of your own health? Yes. Have you ever let someone else take the blame for something that you did? I don't think so. I'm too honest for that. Have you ever acquired something that you didn't really want just because someone else wanted it? Sure. I think I've done that for someone. Do you ever feel like you're not living up to others' expectations? Sometimes. Have you ever walked out of someone's life without any explanation? No. Do you ever feel like you focus more on the negative aspects of your life and what you don't have rather than being grateful of what you do have? People do say that sometimes. Have you ever witnessed someone being wronged but didn't have the courage to stand up for them? Yep. And finally, Jesus, finally. Do you feel like you're a good person? Do you feel like you're a good person? I think I am a good person. In general, not all the time, but I think in general I am a good person. Yeah. Very interesting. That concludes the ending, finally. In your mind, I have a I have dug myself a hole. I will analyze your answers very carefully. Now it's time for me to gaze into your soul. Okay. What is the result? This is preposterous. This simply cannot be. I have expected every potential outcome, but yours seem to have evaded even me. 
Yeah, I'm sure you say that to everyone. I was prepared to tell you of your fate, to play upon your fear, to break the worst of news to you, to plant seeds of doubt within your ear. But as I've asked you to be honest with me, I must in turn be honest with you. For as much as I wish to lie, I'm forever shackled to the truth. From what I can deduct from deep within, from everything you've shared with me, in return I shall share this with you, this is what I see. One word describes you more than any other. <laughs> that word is talented. Okay. <laughs> Personally, I think you're more talented than you realize, and I think you're more talented than anyone else realizes as well. Thank you. If you just spend a little bit less time in your own head, you might get a lot further. You're by far your own worst enemy. You need to seriously cut that shit out and start trusting your natural talents and abilities more. No one knows you better than you. However, you must pay heed to this warning. You're way too overcritical of yourself at times and it can lead to you breaking yourself down way further than you ever should. If you're not careful, you can ruin your entire potential to be successful in life just by not paying attention when you need to self-reflect and when you need to give yourself the credit you deserve. Start being more positive. You'll do just fine. I mean, that is so true for me. That is very true for me. A secret word is talented. Remember this word. <sighs> Man, that kind of got me. I know it's just a game and a general thing to say, but... I do get in my own way sometimes, I feel, and I feel like I should be more positive. And I want to be more positive, but... <sighs> it's not as easy sometimes. If you received an ending that you've already received before from previous examinations, remember we did not ask you your secret words prior to taking this test, so that should be very telling. It means something very special. Well, it's not one of the words I had before. If your result was the same as something you've got previously, we'd like you to add the phrase twin words next to your secret word in the comments. If you received an entire new outcome, then that means you've got multiple layers of things to work on in your journey. Or you may have just have an extra layer of death in to your personality but only you will know the answer to that <laughs> you've answered hundreds of questions you found deeper meanings you've been enlightened and you've helped others find enlightenment i hope so i hope some of you did watch this whole thing and found something useful out of it whatever that might be many people have wondered just what the test series is truly about but it's simple. The answers are always so much more simple than we believe them to be. The test is about... You. The reflection in your darkened screen. The one who seeks the answers. The person who seeks answers. More than being about the answers, the test is more so about the questions. It's about making you think, it's about encouraging you to open up and admit that you're human. Just as human as everyone else. The test is about unity, the test is about compassion. The test is about bringing people together and showing the world that we're not so different after all. Look at all the secret words that have been left in the comments. Look at all those thousands of people who are just like you. We all feel so lonely sometimes, we all feel flawed, we all feel pain. But that's because every single one of us is human. The world judges one another based on so many variables, but they're the most hypocritical set of variable imaginable. We judge each other and are, and are judged ourselves by our peers who do the same exact shit that they judge us for in the end. And that we judge them for, too. You feel flawed because you are flawed. You feel afraid because you have the right to be. You feel overwhelmed because the world is overwhelming. 
Depression is overwhelming. Anxiety is overwhelming. Our problems are overwhelming. Suicide is an epidemic where you're losing loved ones before their time and one of us can fall in the hardest times in our lives at any given moment. We can lose everything we know and love instantly and unexpectedly. But the one thing that we are not is alone. You are never alone. We're all flawed because we're all human. We're all scared because we're all human. We all fight this battle every single day because we're all human. But you never have to feel alone in your fight. Look at all the secret words that have been gathered that match yours. Look at all the words that don't match yours. Perhaps those people are going through struggles that you've yet to experience or know nothing about. And perhaps some others know not of yours either. But don't judge those who are struggling. Help them, just as you wish to be helped in your time of need. Don't be afraid to ask for help and reach out to those who are. Everyone is suffering. Some of us just suffer quieter than others. We're all into this together. The test series has helped bring so many people together and make so many people feel less alone. We've read your comments and others are free to do so as well. We've read about how these games have helped you. We've read about how much positivity they've spread. We've read about how many people say that their lives are forever changed and I'll tell you one thing. If even one life was safe in the process of this social experiment, then it was worth conducting, and every single one of you that left a comment is a hero. By leaving comments you help spread the message out to others. You help spread a positive light in a very dark time for so many people, and those people have you to thank for it. There are so many people in this world who do nothing for others, and they'll continue to do nothing for others. They won't lift a finger to help others around them because they don't understand that someone is suffering just as much as they are. They're just afraid to open up about it. But not us. We've all opened up quite a lot, haven't we? Yeah, especially if you upload this to YouTube. <laughs> we were brave enough to answer these questions that so many people fear admitting to. We are brave enough to take a chance and leave a secret word as a symbol of our participation. And for that, Random Studios would like to thank you by not only placing your name in the credits at the end of this game so the world knows of your good deeds in spreading the word and participating, we've also got another surprise. Everyone who has left a comment on our titles and continues to do so on future titles will be put into the credits of our new massive project that we've been working on. But that's not the good part. We will be also going through and selecting names from those who leave comments on all of our titles and putting their names right into the actual game and storyline. Whether it be a special item, a piece of the lore, or a character named after them and much more. You've contributed your time and energy and helped others in need. We want to make sure you're commemorated for your efforts and get the admiration you deserve. It's nice of them to do that. Now as far as your secret words go, the secret words will play a pivotal role in our new project. You will plug your secret words into different parts of your journey when they are requested of you and they will alter the game in a way uniquely set for your specific words. That sounds quite unique. Fascinating. This is an RPG where every choice matters, where every decision you make changes something about your session. This is an RPG that focuses on every human emotion and the decisions we make and how those decisions make us feel. Keep an eye out in the future for our main project, Chasing Demons, where every NPC from all of our titles will be represented with a storyline and the world will get to see how they all tie in together. You helped shape it, you helped make what it is. And we will be sure to continue to add more and more players into the lore and gameplay as we read more and more of the comments left on our titles all the way up until its official release. And again, to commemorate those who participated across all of our titles, we will be periodically selecting names from all of our titles. Thank you so much for everything you've done. 
and everything you continue to do for the world. We greatly appreciate your feedback and support. We read every single review and comment left for us. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for playing and thank you for contributing your secret words. All right. <clears throat> Another words from the developers. If any of these games save one life, it was all worth it. it means you're part of that you're part of saving someone's life. Most people will live their entire lives never having done something special like that. Even if you didn't particularly find anything useful yourself from the test series, just by spreading the word you've helped others who do find something beneficial from this series who really could use hope in their time of need, as shown in the plethora of positive and inspirational comments left on the series as a whole. So thank you for spreading the word, helping so many people who really truly need it. Some will go their entire lives living selfishly. Yeah, we've read that. That's okay. There's a place for all types of people in the world. We need people like that to create balance. We need the selfish with the selfless. We need the good with the bad. We need the happiness with the sadness. And I think that's very true. I think that's a very important part to everything in this. If you don't believe me, take a look for yourself. Read some of the words people have left. Look at the joy and positivity you've helped spread throughout the world. Such a dark time. <sighs> what an experience, huh? And yes, I understand. It's cheesy a little bit for some people. Some questions don't really make sense. Sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. But I think it sends a nice message anyway. And that's a good thing. And it made me learn some things about myself too. And I hope you guys learned something about me. And I guess we'll see what else happens. Of course I'm going to be playing Chasing Demons when it comes out. I've already wishlisted. We'd also like to give a special shout out to Markiplier and his community. Ha! Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I did see him play that and I was inspired myself again to revisit the series because of that. <laughs> Funny. And he clearly got the game some attention which it deserved, so yeah. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe I'll be put into the full game as well. That would be great. Whoops. Okay, in the meantime, we'd like to recommend our title, The Advisor, to you. We feel that it provides a great opportunity for player-developer interactions and allows players to cast their vote where the story should lead. Choices matter, never done before, as you, the player, are responsible for how the story is written. Keep a hold of your secret words. You're going to need them when you're chasing demons. Clever. What? I peel the truth from your flesh like petals from a blackened rose. She loves me. Holy crap, what's happening? Choice, don't do this. I thought this was the end. She loves me not. <laughs> she loves me. Please, I beg of you. <laughs> she loves me not. Oh. My camera is going to run out of battery, by the way, any seconds. That's how long this episode's been going. She loves me, she loves me not. What's happening? She will never love a monster like you. Just like a showcase of what the game's going to be. So let her choice take its toll. And in her cell, May, she. Rot. Okay. Interesting. Alright. Well, if that's the end, I'll... <laughs> See you guys next time. May listen to names who support it. Uh, no.
yeah, that is the end. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna end it quickly. An hour and a half is long enough. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you thought of the game. Leave your thoughts in the comments and leave a like if you want to see more like this. Anyway, this was you, Phoenix. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe now for more to come. Until then, be brave, be kind, and stay awesome.